awesome. Hello students, moving on to the next topic. We'll discuss about the types of infections in neonates. So we'll start with the first infection which is most common. This is ophthalmia neonatura or neonatal conjunctivitis. This is the inflammation of conjunctiva which is seen between 3 to 4 weeks of birth. And uh, this affects about 1.6 to 12 percent of the neonates. The main reason behind this is infected birth passage. The neonates which are born through vaginal delivery has about 60 to 75 percent of uh, 60 to 75 percent chances of getting this infection. It could be bacterial, chlamydial, or viral infection. Uh, the types if we discuss, the causative agents if we discuss are. Uh, this could be either caused by chlamydia trachomatis. This is usually unilateral and occurs more than 5 days after birth. And if this is a gonococcal infection, then it would involve either one or both eyes and it would be seen within 48 hours of birth and purulent discharge would be present. This could either be caused by streptococcus, staphylococcus, pneumococcus, E. coli, herpes simplex. The other reason could be chemicals. The chemicals which are which usually cause ophthalmia uh, neonatura are either silver nitrate, soap or some antibiotic eye drops. Then talking about the clinical features. The eyes of the neonate would be red and sticky. The swollen eyelids would be there. There would be uh, discharge from either one or both of the eyes. The discharge would be either uh, a simple watery discharge to mucoperulent discharge would be present. Then when we talk about management, uh, we need to use antibiotics and appropriate antibiotic could be selected by using culture and sensitivity test. After uh, knowing the appropriate antibiotic that can be administered as either eye drop or parenteral antibiotics can be used. We need to isolate the baby because isolation is very important otherwise the infection would spread to other babies as well. Sulfacetamide, gentamicin, chloramphenicol eye drops could be used or erythromycin ointment can be used. Then for gonococcal infection penicillin is the drug of choice and if the baby is resistant to penicillin then uh, cefexime or ceftriaxone can be used. Cleaning of eyes should be done. Separate swab should be used for both of the eyes and uh, uh, moist saline, uh, most moist sterile swab dipped in saline should be used for cleaning of eyes. And if we talk about the, the prevention, this yes, this is preventable. Treatment of maternal infection should be done. Aseptic delivery techniques should be used and isolation of infected baby should be done in order to prevent transmission to other, other babies. Prognosis is very good if this is diagnosed in early stages and prompt management is done. If this is neglected, no treatment is given in early phase, then this could lead to blocked nasolacrimal duct and in later stages, in few rare cases, this may lead to blindness as well. Then coming to the next, we'll discuss about umbilical sepsis, which is also known as omphalitis. Omphalitis was very common in the past when deliveries were not done in, in the institutes. And now the institutional deliveries has been raised. So aseptic techniques are maintained during delivery. So the rates of omphalitis has been decreased. But there are a few causes which may lead to omphalitis. These are unhygienic environment of delivery, umbilical catheterization which may be required for some procedures uh, after delivery if the newborn gets into some complication. Exchange blood transfusion would have been done for the baby. Contaminated cord cutting instrument is used either infected hands of the caregiver or the clothes which are worn by the infant are uh, unclean that, that may also lead to umbilical sepsis. What are the agents that cause umbilical sepsis are Staphylococcus, E. coli or other pyogenic organisms may cause this. Clostridium tetany may also cause omphalitis which may further lead to tetanus neonatorum. Then we'll discuss about the clinical features. What would be the features? The swollen, moist, periumbilical tissue would be there. There would be redness around the umbilicus. Foul smell uh, would be there. Then purulent discharge may be present in the umbilicus and delayed falling of the cord. The baby may also have fever. Then we'll talk about the management. How is it managed? 
management is done by cleaning of the cord with spirit and antibiotic ointment or powder should be applied, lotion should be applied but the area, the cord should be kept uncovered. You should remember that it should not be dressed. It should be kept uncovered by using some antiseptic ointment on the cord. Then systemic antibiotics may be used in some complicated cases. Culture and sensitivity of the cord, uh, cord swab can be taken in order to determine the type of antibiotic which should be used. Prognosis depends upon the type of infection, early management and quality of nursing care given to the baby. Then we'll move on to the next uh, infection which is also very common this is oral thrush. Oral thrush is uh, a fungal infection of oral cavity and tongue. This is caused by candida albicans after five days of birth up to two weeks of life or even later it could be seen. The causes which lead to oral thrush are infected birth canal, infected nipples or feeding bottles which are used to feed the baby immature immune system of the baby, prolonged use of antibiotics which may lead or make the baby prone to get fungal infections. The sign and symptoms are white patches of the roof of the mouth, inside of the cheeks and tongue. The curdy white uh, tongue would be seen. There would be a layer, whitish layer over the tongue on the roof of the mouth and inside of the cheeks. So these white lesions when scrapped off, the, there would be a red layer which would be seen. Red tissue would be seen under this which may bleed and may lead to pain to the baby. It looks like meal, uh, look like milk but it cannot be wiped off. Then how it could be diagnosed? It could be diagnosed with physical examination and swab culture and sensitivity can be done. Treatment. Uh, it, the treatment is done by 0.5% gentian violet which is used after each feed. Nistatin, ketoconazole and clotrimazole lotion can be used. Parenteral antifungal drugs may also be used. Then we will come next to pyoderma. Pyoderma is superficial skin infection which is caused by Staphylococcus aureus. This is usually seen over the scalp, neck groin and axillary region of the neonates. This is usually seen in the summer months. Contaminated hands of the caregiver, unhygienic environment and contaminated clothes may lead to this infection. This may spread uh, and may lead to abscess, osteomyelitis, parotitis and septicemia which may further lead to life-threatening pemphigus neonatorum if not managed in early stages. Treatment is done by puncturing and cleaning the, uh, uh, cleaning the regions, the lesions over the skin using antiseptic skin care technique and antibiotic ointments are used. Pus culture and sensitivity should be done in order to determine the effective antibiotic that should be used. Erythromycin can be given orally or parenterally if the infection is higher or is complicated. Prognosis is good if prompt treatment is done and a good nursing care is provided. The best is to prevent these infections by avoiding how we can prevent is we should avoid the dip bath or providing a dip bath to the neonate early uh, in during hospitalization because this uh, dip bath provided to many babies may lead to uh, transmission of infection from one baby to the other. So dip bath during hospitalization should be avoided. Then isolation of infected baby should be done using of aseptic techniques and maintenance of hygienic or aseptic techniques should be done. So this is how we can uh, prevent pyoderma. Next we will discuss a few other topics in the next lecture.